living translation, so it may read a little different. When they came to a place called the Skull, they nailed him to the cross. And the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and his left. Verse 39, one of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. Verse 33 says, when they came to the place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. Would you just touch about three people on your way down to your seat and tell them I'm nailed to this. <laughs> you may be seated. If you, have a, if you have a pen and a piece of paper or whatever you use to take notes, I want you to quickly take time to write down and you have to be honest with yourself to do this. Nobody is exempt. I want you to write down what God has assigned you to do. What is your God-given assignment? I want you to write it down, and I want you to read it over and over the entire time that I'm preaching today. Whatever God has assigned you, I don't care how long you've been ignoring it. I want you to write down what God has assigned you to do. Living life on the edge. When I began writing, that's the first thing that God said. Living life on the edge. It is a statement of exposure. Because many of you are guilty of living life on the edge. You are right at the edge of the fulfillment of your calling. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, Tika, you show what God has put in you, Alex, and then you pull back. You let God speak through you, April, but you allow fear to pull you back. You know there's more in you, Shamira, but you allow the lack of confidence to cause you to hold back. It, it, it is the reality of living life on the edge. You won't fully walk in your assignment because you don't want to fully commit to everything God requires of you. I'm on the edge. I got one foot in and one foot out, not realizing that half commitment is full disobedience. Many of you like to be comfortable. Assignment ain't comfortable. You like to do it your way. Assignment don't go your way. You, 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 many of you, you like attention, you like applause and glory, which is why your ministry and presentation is contaminated. Assignment ain't for you. This word is not supposed to feel good today. I, I, I am, I'm pushing you to a place of conviction because many of you, Deacon Bradley, are behind God's schedule. You're trying to work out your own plan and then make God adapt to it. The purpose of your transformation in Christ was so that you can adapt to what he desires, not for you to attempt to outsmart him and get him to adapt to what you feel comfortable doing, Shannon. He, 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 here lies the problem. Here, here lies the problem with you living life on the edge. On the edge of purpose, on the edge of assignment, on the edge of manifested intentions of God for your life. The problem is he doesn't want you to be on the edge. Where would your life be, Robert, had you heard him clearly and followed him, Devante, directly? Now, just because I called your name doesn't mean that you're guilty. And just because I didn't call your name doesn't mean you're not guilty. 
You just have to uh, take that up with God. Where, where, where would this church be <laughs> if everybody connected listened to the word that is preached? Follow the word that is preached. Obey the word that is preached. And not just saying, pastor on our neck. It's the ninth month of the year. By now, it's not why it's pastor's foot on our neck. It's why have you yet to move your neck from under my foot? By now, you should be fully walking in your calling. By now, you shouldn't be guilty of uh, the conviction of the sermon. That's why you're avoiding prayer. That's why you skip Sundays. That's why you barely show up. Because being connected to this house pushes you to fully walk in what God has said. Many of you, the Lord uh, can speak to you on Sunday. And here you are another Sunday crying at the altar. Here you are another Sunday laying in the floor. And woo, God done beat us up today. But you go right back to the same place of inactivity and comfort shaking off on Monday what God touched your heart with on Sunday Ephesians 2 and 10 Ephesians 2 and 10 says for we are his workmanship Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so we can walk in them. One translation says work that we better be doing. I need you to understand that whatever God has assigned to your life, who told you you could take a break? Who told you you can put it off? Y'all ain't talking to me here. Who told you that you could procrastinate? It's work that you better be doing. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, before I formed you, uh, before, before I formed you, I, I, in the womb I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. Those words are to Jeremiah, but are the same for us. Before you decided to do your own thing, before you made up your mind to follow your will, God said, I called you to something. The question is, before you understood that you could make your own decisions, what did God tell you to do? Lord have mercy. The question tonight is, why are we ignoring what he said? What is it that makes you ignore the voice of your leader and not be in alignment with your assignment? What is it that makes you go your own way? Eh. I don't think I've ever heard this church this quiet. No, 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 no matter, no matter what we say, you ain't going to tithe. You won't do it because it requires alignment. We can't get you to stay on a ministry without quitting. You won't do it because it means alignment. You keep hiding behind this and that uh, because it requires alignment. What if God says, I'm putting everything on hold in your life until you are aligned with my word. I'm going to shut things down in your life until you come into alignment. I'm going to close doors until you come into alignment. You cannot go through this life thinking that you can just do what you want, how you want, when you want, and ignore the voice of God. He has called you, appointed you, assigned you, equipped you, and you are not allowed to ignore what he has called you to do when God showed me this word he said tell Mount Moriah that the call of God the assignment of God will do three things for you the first thing he says he says it will push you to maturity second thing he says he says it will alert you of coming warfare and the third thing he says it will make you shift your lifestyle all right, let's work a little bit here. Number one, the assignment of God will push you to maturity. But you must embrace the process of maturing. Some of you are trying to walk in your calling based on your level of gifting. I'm going to help you tonight. You, you try to outsmart God by using your gift all while not maturing. 
Because if I display my gift enough, my immaturity will be ignored. And I control the narrative because my gift is needed. Even if my immaturity is not, or my maturity is not required. Oh God, let me say it one more time. Because if I display my gift enough, my immaturity will be ignored. And I control the narrative because my gift is needed even if my maturity is not required. You're a witch. To use tricks, to use methods and magic or giftings to manipulate the system and processes of God is witchcraft. The problem with the church is that we are afraid to sit people down who aren't mature. Oh God, we are afraid that they will stop tithing, they'll stop singing, they'll leave the church or whatever else y'all like to do to try to hold the church hostage. And we have to beware of people who will use their gift to hold the church hostage while making the ransom satisfied flesh. God is calling us to maturity. 1 Corinthians 14 and 20. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking or infants in your evil, but in your thinking be mature. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, when I was a child. I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away immaturity. I wish I had a church to talk to tonight. That's why we have to deal with you always quitting because you're immature. Something doesn't go your way. Somebody says something wrong to you. You get in your feelings and here you are quitting or throwing a tantrum. I've never seen so many tantrums in the church of God. People who don't get their way and start pouting. Pastor didn't show you the attention that you wanted and now you're so in discord. You didn't get the position that you wanted and now you're sitting in church with an attitude. Why y'all ain't talking to me here? You won't move, you won't clap, you won't worship, you won't pray. I didn't say nothing. But I was trying to figure out why some of y'all were sitting in that in tune prophetic and intercession training this week and you ain't even here dear intercession okay you on your phone dear in prayer you stare at resound while they leading us in worship how are you gonna be prophetic or an intercessor and you gossip too much you don't tithe you don't pray and your word be off y'all ain't talking to me here i'm not off subject because i know you are the main ones that have the most tantrums and no maturity God is calling for maturity. Stop, stop allowing your emotions to make you abort what God assigned you to do. Now that you are mad, all of a sudden God ain't called you. The Bible says in Hebrews 5 and 14 that the meaty assignments, the solid food is for the mature. So that's why you can't be trusted with more. That's why you are limited to what you can do in this church. So that's why you haven't been assigned to it. God wants maturity first. Appreciate your gift, but God wants you mature first. Many of you. Many of you are in tantrum seasons right now. You're in a tantrum season because of your immaturity right now. That's why you're on your way out the door. You're just looking for a reason to leave Mount Moriah. <laughs> now you see so much wrong with the church. Now, now, now God ain't here no more. Now the pastor can't hear from God. He ain't anointed no more. Touch your neighbor and say, watch it. Your immaturity is showing. See, see how some of y'all didn't say nothing? Immature. Because immaturity makes you hate correction. You hate direction. You hate instruction. But in order for you to do the assignment of God, you have to mature. Second thing God says, help me here. Second thing God says, he says that the assignment alerts you of coming warfare. I need you to hear me closely because every assignment from God comes with some level of warfare. The real reason that many of you don't walk in your calling is because you're actually scared of the devil. 
it, it, it is something that we must acknowledge because the enemy doesn't uh, he desires that you abort what God has assigned you to do the enemy needs you to disconnect from this church and this voice because he knows you'll be pushed to maximize your assignment here we have to be spiritually aware this is a spiritual battle Lord, the enemy is real and he's trying to frustrate your purpose. The tricky thing about spiritual warfare, watch this. The tricky thing about spiritual warfare is that you're never actually instructed to attack the enemy. Oh God. Paul encourages us in Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God so we can do what? We got to put on all this armor so we can stand. Lord, have mercy against the enemy's schemes. In fact, you destroy Satan's demand not through combat, but by sharing about Jesus with others and standing firm in doing good and obeying his will. The real way to defeat the enemy is not to try to fight back, but to stand. Hit your neighbor and say, if I could just make it through this, the devil would be defeated. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But when you stand through temptation, the devil is defeated. What he wants you to do is crumble. What he wants you to do is turn back. He wants you to give up. But I need you to hit somebody and say, stand through it. Uh, another of Jesus followers James sums it up the key to spiritual warfare he says submit yourselves then to God resist the devil and he will flee from you come near to God and he will come near to you you see you're not equipped to fight hand to hand with the enemy you can't see especially since the enemy wants nothing more than to distract you from growing in your knowledge of Jesus and walking with him instead you engage in this conflict by submitting yourself to God and ridding yourself of Satan's influence see the goal of spiritual warfare is to resist the devil's schemes as you give yourself to God's work all right. Peter reinforces this in the letter he wrote to suffering Christians. This is how he follows up his warning that the devil is prowling like a lion. He says, resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering like James Peter encourages you to repeal the enemy's assaults by being faithful Peter, Peter says you resist Satan by standing firm in your faith. People often say that a good offense is the best defense. But when it comes to the enemy of your soul, the Bible wants you to understand that a good defense is the key to tearing down demonic strongholds. That's why you can't be afraid of the devil. Have you ever noticed when Paul lists the armor of God? all of it is front armor nothing covers your back because you're not supposed to run from the devil Lord have mercy hit your neighbor and say stand still I need about 30 of y'all that ain't scared of the devil to just stand where you are and tell the devil I'm not afraid I'm ready for every fiery dart I'm ready for what you gotta bring my way I'll stand through it all Grab three people and say, stand still. Don't you dare give up. Stand still. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Stand still. It's going to get hard. It's going to get rough. It's going to get tough. But stand. And having done all to stand. Stand there forth. Yes, Lord. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, please. Don't stop standing. Woo! 
You may go through a season where you can't dance, but you can stand. You may go through a season where you can't throw no punch, but at least stand. You may go through a season where you can't do all you want to do, but grab somebody and say, stand. All right, I got the move. I got the move. I got the move. Let me do this. John, come here real quick. I got to do this real quickly, real quickly while the Holy Spirit is, is saying it. Now, I, I need you to need you to hear me because you, you are one who God has put here that that can be trusted. There, now, when when I was talking about you last week, I, I likened you to how I help my father. You are my reaping of what I have sown. There is nothing I have put in front of you that you have not been able to do. But there's getting ready to be a weight put on you. Lord have mercy. Uh, Lady Ashley, come here real quick. Uh, Prophet Jeremiah, come here real quick. There's a, there's a weight that's about to be put on you. And you got to be prepared for this weight. Mm. You, are a, you are a warrior in prayer. But God is getting ready to turn it up a little bit. Because, because there, there is a weight of warfare that's coming upon you. Hear me. Hear me. But you're going to have to stand through it. What the devil wants to do is challenge you to come out of character. Lord, and that's what you're going to challenge is going to be in this next season because the weight that's about to be put on you, but there's an apostolic grace. Come here. There's an apostolic grace that's getting ready to rest upon you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, give me this right quick. There's an apostolic grace. Come here real quick. Come here real quick. Yeah. And the weight of the assignments. Hey. You're covered. And I'm my short of higher. You got the apostolic grace upon you. Yeah, to bring change and transformation. Yes, you're covered. You're covered. You're covered. You'll be able to stand through it, John. Robert, I need you. Not right now. You ain't got to come up here. But what you're going to do is in the home. Pray over your wife. Speak over her life. Speak over her assignments. Speak over what she's assigned to do in this next season. Because the grace that's on your life is going to shift more than what you're connected to. I got I to gotta move. Give me some oil. Give me some oil. Chelsea, come here real quick. Put some oil in her hand. Put you put some oil in her hand. I, I got to move to the next point. Put some oil in her hand. I, I want you to go. I want you to anoint your husband's ears. Yeah. I, I, anoint his ears. Anoint his ears. Anoint his ears. Yeah. Because as your wife who prays for you often lays hands on you. Yeah. You, you are going to hear God differently in the next season. Hmm. Yes, yes. You travel with me. So there's warfare coming to your house too. See, the thing about being connected to Magnet is that you're either going to step up to the plate of warfare or you're going to tuck tail and run. But for you, there's a grace that's coming upon your life to have a sensitivity to hear the voice of God and be able to move with the voice of God. Never take for granted your assignment. When I preach, you preach. I got to move forward. Yes, I, I need you to speak Chelsea healing over his life. From the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Yes, even emotional healing. I speak confidence on another level. In the name of Jesus. I got to move because I, I got some more to go. I got some more to go. I got some more to go. <laughs> all right. All right. So God says, God says, God says, yes, God. Yes, God. Touch your neighbor and say, it's all about the assignment. It's not about me. It's about the assignment. It's not about what I want to do. It's about the assignment. All right. 
I got to give you the rest of this because this is what God says. He says, number one, the assignment will push you to maturity. Take your seats. Number two, the assignment will alert you of coming warfare. And then number three, yes, Lord, come on down because you got to get this one. Number three, the assignment will make you shift your lifestyle. Oh, yes. It will make you shift your lifestyle. Now, one of the things that God showed me during this time of concentrate consecration that I have been summoned to without an end date. He said, McNair, notice where I want to elevate you. Whenever I want to elevate you, McNair, he says, he says, there are certain attacks that the enemy unleashes. Oh, God. Every time that I'm in warfare, every time that God's getting ready to do something different in my ministry, there are always two ways that the enemy comes at me. But this time the devil's losing. <laughs> yeah, this this time the devil's loose. Uh, intercessors know where I'm going, but one of the things uh, among many that the enemy cannot stand, hear me, uh, he cannot stand a consecrated lifestyle. Uh, when you truly are striving to live for God, uh, when you bring your flesh under subjection, uh, when you put your desires and will to the side, uh, the devil came standards and because that means God is getting ready to bless you for withstanding the tricks of the enemy some of you could shout right now if you actually knew what victory felt like uh, but too many of you every time temptation comes you bow to it uh, come here Isaiah chapter 6 in the year King Uzziah died I saw the Lord high and lifted up his train filled the temple above them stood the seraphims with six wings they covered their face covered their feet and with two they did fly and they cried to one another holy 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 is the Lord of hosts and the doorposts move and I said I am a man of unclean lips because whenever you get in the presence of God he will show you how much change you need in yourself that's why many of you don't worship you'll dance but you won't worship because worship shows you how nasty you are worship shows you the innermost fibers of who you are in God's presence worship calls you out and Isaiah says woe is me I'm undone I'm messed up I got unclean lips I got unclean company and he says that an angel a seraphim grabbed tongues off the altar with a live coal and touched my lips and took away my sin and when I went through that process yes Lord then I said all right God send me you're not ready for your assignments until your lifestyle changes some of you need to change your lifestyle before God uses you to the magnitude that he wants to many of you fight lifestyle changes which allows the enemy to afflict you control you and make you bow to your flesh many of you the life you are living is not how God wants you to live that's why he put you in this place tonight to hear this word because he loves you enough to correct you and hold you accountable to change uh, be ye changed from the inside out when he changes your heart it will be expressed in the way you act the way you walk the way you talk the way you live impact nation God wants us to embrace the assignment that is on our life I know that it will be a fight to get you to submit but you must submit Tell somebody you got to submit. I know it will be a battle to get you to give in fully and stop living life on the edge. But you must do it. Caitlin, you got 
to do it. Jesus shows us what this process looks like. Let me let me work this text a little bit and then we're going to fly. The Gospels, the Gospels contain the account of the time the disciples and Jesus spent in the Garden of Gethsemane. Just before Jesus was arrested. Are y'all still reading your paper? In the Garden, Jesus prayed to his father three times saying, my father, if it be possible let this cup pass from me uh, yet not my will but as you will the King James Version says let this cup pass from me a little later Jesus prays my father if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it may your will be done you see these prayers reveal Jesus mindset just before the crucifixion and his total submission to the will of God the cup to which Jesus refers is the suffering that he's about to endure please don't miss this uh, it's as if Jesus were, had been handed a cup full of bitterness with the expectation that he drink all of it Jesus had used the same metaphor in Matthew 20 and 22 when prophesying of the future suffering of James and John when Jesus petitions the father let this cup pass from me he expresses the natural human desire to avoid pain and suffering I wish I had time. Jesus is fully God, but he's also fully human. His human nature, though perfect, still struggled with the need to accept the torture and shame that awaited him. His flesh recoiled from the cross. In the same context, Jesus says to his disciples, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak in praying let this cup pass from me Jesus was battling the flesh and his desire for self preservation and comfort so you're not the only one that has been looking for a place of comfort you're not the only one that wants to be comfortable in your assignments Jesus went through the same thing but here's what I need you to see the struggle was intense Jesus the Bible says was overwhelmed with sorrow to the point and Luke the physician observed that Jesus was sweating blood oh god this is no mistake no he's sweating so bad uh, he's in so much pain and anguish concerning what he's about to do concerning his assignment that blood is coming down his face like sweat lord have mercy if anything shows that jesus was indeed fully man this prayer shows us jesus knew that what was to come the agony he faced was going to be more than physical it would be spiritual and emotional as well Jesus knew that God's will was to crush him Lord have mercy and to allow him to be pierced for our transgressions and wounded for our healing I need you to touch your neighbor and say you're not exempt from pain if God's will was to crush Jesus who do you think you are to be exempt from pain no the assignment comes with pain Jesus loves mankind but his, his humanity dreaded the pain and sorrow he faced and it drove him to ask the father again if it's possible let's find another way to do this get somebody else to do it let's find another way around this but the humanity was overpowered by the divinity and he says to the father not my will but thine will be done it is the act of and you learned this in school it's the act of kenosis where Jesus is human and divine but I need you to understand that although he's human and divine his human nature never touched his divinity because then it would cease to be human and his divinity never touched his humanity then it will cease to be divinity but the humanity and divinity dwelt in him at the same time but when it came to the assignment Kenosis says he had to empty himself Lord have mercy uh, and lean over on his divinity the Bible says I need you to catch this they nailed him to the cross 
Luke 23, they have put him through enough that will make anybody want to give up. That will make anybody want to throw in the towel. And while he's on the cross, this is what I need you to see. Verse 39 says, one of the thieves who was on the cross beside him said, ain't you the Messiah? Come down. <laughs> save yourself and save us too. <laughs> now, I'm grateful that Jesus did not allow the thief. <sighs> Uh, he did not allow the thief to change his thought concerning his assignment. He didn't allow the thief's words to make him abort his assignment. You see, many times we allow the talk and intimidation of people to cause us to go in directions that are not meant for us to go in. Lord have mercy I've been saying this all week but y'all gotta get it out of your head that you have to be moved by what folks say I'm not working to hear you say good job I'm working to hear him say well done grab your neighbor by the hand and say I'm working I'm working Oh God, I'm glad that Jesus did not allow the thief's words to cause him to jump into his flesh and leave his assignment like many of you. Now, I ask the text a question, man. You don't always ask the text questions. I ask the text question and through study, I got an answer. See, there's a difference, Mike. There's a difference. There's a difference between the cross of Jesus and the cross of the thieves. Please don't miss this, Candace. There's a difference between the cross of Jesus and the cross of the thieves. Yes, there are three crosses up on Golgotha. There's three crosses up there on Calvary. But there's a difference between the cross of Jesus and the cross of the thieves. Because they were tied to something that he was nailed to. Oh, I got to go. Uh, yes, sir. Tell your neighbor we're not the same. You see, the custom of that day was when they were crucified, they were tied to the cross. And what they would do to make them suffocate, they would break their legs and allow them to hang from the cross. Yeah, but the thieves were tied like normal. But Jesus was nailed God help me here you see touch your neighbor again and tell them we're not the same tell them you can give up I can't you can walk out on the church I can't you can abort your assignment I can't you can stop coming you can stop tithing you can stop helping you can stop serving you can catch an attitude you can skip Sundays I can't you're tied to this yes Lord and when you get mad you can untie yourself when you get upset you can untie yourself when things don't go your way you can untie yourself when you don't agree with the pastor you can untie yourself yell at him and say but me I'm nailed to this I can't give up I can't come down I can't abort this I'm nailed to this look at your paper again and tell yourself I'm nailed to this whatever God has assigned me to do I'm not tied to it if I don't like it I can't just untie myself but I'm nailed to it grab your neighbor I wish I had the voice and the energy grab your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor oh yeah, I'm nailed to this I can't give up I'm nailed to this I can't throw in the towel I'm nailed to this he said ain't you the messiah come down save yourself do it your own way follow your flesh and Jesus says if I wanted to call legions they'll come get me off the cross but he said I made up my mind I must stay here 
I'm nailed to it. Is there anybody here? You're nailed to it. Is there anybody here that's made up your mind? I won't throw in the towel. I won't quit. I won't stop. I'm nailed to it. I can't give up. I'm nailed to it. I'm committed to it. Grab your neighbor. Y'all ain't shouting enough for me. This is the church part. Touch your neighbor and say, oh neighbor, I'm so glad that God nailed me to the assignment. I can't give up. If God before me can be against me, no weapon. No weapon, no, 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 no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I made up my mind, God has my back, God has me covered. Oh, I know why y'all ain't shouting. You don't want to remain nailed to the assignment, but I got to tell you something, if you stay nailed to the assignments three days later I said three days later three days later it's his good pleasure to get you up from the grave the assignments will beat you the assignments will pierce you the assignments will nail you but the assignment can't keep you from God's resurrection power grab your neighbor and say neighbor I I'm getting up from here I, I'm getting up from here I got power more power than I had before more power to do his will more power If the devil could get you to quit, he'll make you throw in the towel. If the devil can get you to give up, he'll make you give up. If the devil can run you away from Mount Moriah, he'll run you away. But grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm nailed to it. I'm nailed to it. I got an assignment. And I'm here to see it fulfilled. I'm here to see it come to pass. I'm here till God works it out. I'm here till God opens a door. If you believe it, see it. Go touch three people and say, I'm nailed to it. I'm nailed to it. I'm nailed to it. I'm nailed to it. So praise God, because the truth of the matter is, you don't deserve the assignment. You don't deserve to hear from heaven. You don't deserve what God nailed you to. But by his grace, by his mercy, you got an assignment. You got a calling. You got a gifting. So praise God for the gift praise God for the assignment praise God oh shucks let everything that have breath open your mouth I don't deserve it but God I didn't ask for it but God didn't call myself but God and if God called me he'll cover me while I work for 
for it. If you believe it, open your mouth. The truth of the matter is, tonight, conviction hit your spirit, and you realized if you're tied to it or nailed to it, whatever God has called you to do, Vincent, you're either tied to it or nailed to it. The truth of the matter is, those who are tied to it are not the right ones for it. Come here, Isaac. Abraham took Isaac up Mount Moriah, laid him down on the altar, getting ready to sacrifice him. So he tied him down. But God says, that's not the one. Years later, Jesus... He wasn't tied to it. He was nailed. It's my assignment because I was nailed to it. It's not an option. It's not a choice for me. I got to. Here's what I need you to see. There's nothing that will stop what Jesus has nailed you to. Huh? You can't run from him. You can't get out of it. You won't sleep right until you bow down to it. For those of you, watch this, who do not have a pastor, do not have a church home, watch this, this is, not a get a, this is not a ploy to get you to join here. You need somewhere that can develop the assignment that's on the inside of you. If not, you'll be restless until you do. Those of you who are not saved, your life will be uneasy if there's an assignment attached to it. Because God has to put you on a path of righteousness to get you to line up with his word and his will. Why aren't things panning out for me? Well, what are you ignoring that God told you to do? Hmm? Why are things not working out in my favor? Well, would you bless you if you were God? Knowing that you're ignoring God? Why isn't God investing in me? Well, right now, your immaturity makes you a bad investment. Because if he invests in you now, he won't get a return on his investment. Hmm. God says, I need some people who have a paper in their hand, phone in their hand, seeing what they're assigned to. And make up their mind. No longer am I tied to this. I'm nailed to it. My immaturity will not make me give up. I have to mature. I have to be ready for warfare. I got to change my lifestyle. I ask God. Because he has me on consecration. And he says to me, shut everything down. Minimize who you talk to. Because you've been distracted, I need you to hear me clearly. See, you can only alter your lifestyle based upon the care you have for your assignment. If I don't bow to what God says, you're in trouble. Ask your question, how many people are attached to your assignment? How many people are suffering right now because you won't do what God called you to do? How many people are behind 
because they didn't hear the lyrics that you were supposed to put on the album. How many people don't have because you're too shy to walk in your calling? How many boys are failing because you're supposed to be a male mentor but you're not walking in it? How many young girls are without because you're supposed to be a mentor but you're not walking in your calling? I'm fearful. I'm scared. I'm supposed to be doing it. But I don't want nobody to say that. I don't want nobody to do this. You're really basting your calling off folk who didn't call you? You're really holding back because of what folk got to say? You can say what the hot ham and cheese you want to say about me. What God... I won't live stream it. I... What God has called me to do shall be done. Whether you like it or not. I told him this morning, I'm more afraid of God than I'm afraid of you. Mm -hmm. I've already been in battles with him and I lost every last one of them. I can beat you. Listen, I need you to touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're tied to this. What are you ignoring? Tonight, no particular altar call. All of us are at the altar. Uplifted hands all over the building. Tonight is your night of recommitment. Hey. Father, we need you to position us, posture us in a place of recommitment. Some of you need to recommit to your church. Recommit to your assignment. Some of you need to recommit to your leader. Some of you need to recommit to the calling that you've been ignoring. Tonight is your night of recommitment. What's taking you so long to walk to the altar to get saved? What are you running from? What's taking you so long to get somewhere planet where a pastor can help develop you? Why are you ignoring God? He's calling you now. He's challenging you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive us. Forgive us. We've been shouting, but out of your will. We've been gathering and having good church but out of your will. So Father, we need you to touch us. Thank you, God. Forgive us for ignoring you. Give us another chance, God, to make it right. Tonight, many are standing in this sanctuary and they're standing in a place of recommitment in the name of Jesus give us the boldness give us the enthusiasm give us the drive to go after what you've called us to do we don't want to ignore it anymore thank you for sending this word of correction and direction and instruction now help us God to shift our life help us to change our mindset in the name of Jesus Love you and we give you praise. We want to thank you, God, because the assignment that you've trusted us with, you're trusting treasure in earthen vessel. In other words, you're trusting treasure in something worthless. But thank you for trusting us. Thank you, God. Thank you for trusting us. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for seeing in us what we don't see in ourselves or what we have been ignoring. Touch our level of confidence. We rebuke fear. We rebuke anxiety. We rebuke procrastination. Everything that's causing us to ignore what you've called us to do, we cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Give us the strength to recommit in Jesus' name.